This is crazy. Winter temperatures are up one day and down the next day. Is this good or bad for our bees? Well, let me tell you this, it's not good. On these warmer winter days, bees are breaking cluster and they're flying. But in my situation where I live in central Illinois, there's just nothing out there for them to go to. I mean, guys, they're flying and looking for honey and pollen, but there's nothing. And there won't be anything until maybe March. And so I'm a couple of three months away from, from the bees ever finding anything to eat. <laughs> but oh my gosh, they're out there looking for it. And what does this mean? Why is this bad? Because every time bees start flying, guess what? They're using a ton of energy. Just like when we go out walking or running or exercising, our bodies consume more calories. They, our body has to have energy. We have to eat more protein and carbohydrates to exercise. Bees are, are no different. They're using up all of their stored honey, all of their stored winter food. They're using it on these scouting missions where they're flying out. Now, some of you might think, okay, well, this is good for bees because they were able to go out and potty. And sure, when the bees go out and potty, this does greatly reduce the chances of them dying from something like the gut disease, Nozema. But if they have no food to eat, a disease doesn't matter. They're starving out. So I want to give you some tips today on what you need to do to keep your bees from dying from these moments when it warms up and they start using all of their resources. Before we jump into the solution, let me just encourage you to please subscribe. Bobblehead David is excited about you guys subscribing and uh, that's why he's holding the subscribe sign if you can't read that. And look at this cute little hive. It is a complete hive with a top cover and an inner cover, and all the individual frames. Isn't that great? Brian at Castle Hives here on YouTube gave that to me. I uh, saw him at Hive Life, and I thought I'd feature it in my videos. Now, I want to encourage you to subscribe. Your subscription to my YouTube channel is so exciting for me. You guys helped me achieve my uh, silver play button. 100,000 subscribers. Thanks so much. Click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I present videos like this giving you solutions for beekeeping problems. So what can we do when our bees start flying, consuming all this resources out of the hive and winter isn't even nearly over yet? Tip number one is this. We need to make sure that we can find these nice warm days where it's dry outside and take something like a, a board, a piece of cardboard, a piece of metal or a pan or something and purchase some bee protein powder it's pollen substitute and it doesn't really matter what brand you use a lot of a lot of you always ask me what's the best brand you know there's a lot of good brands out there from some of these major beekeeping companies long as it's made for bees now a lot of you ask me can i use protein powder that's made for humans i wouldn't do that there's specific blends of protein powder that that is that has to be made for bees to help bees bees aren't like humans and, and our guts aren't the same so we need bee protein substitute powder look at this i put it out there in the yard i put some down sometimes i bait it with a little bit of honey and bees are going to be right there and consuming it now the bees start flying over the top of it stirring it up into the air and they collect it, if you look closely, you can see it in the back of their little pollen baskets, their back legs. Now this is important to give them protein this time of the year. That's probably what they need most during the winter, not so much sugar water. So when you make candy boards yourself, don't just make candy, but also give them some protein in that candy board. That's what they need as well. So tip number one, if you can, Put some protein powder out in your yard, away from your hives a little bit. It may take them a few hours to find it, but once they do, this will be a huge help for your bees. Now, even though they don't need a lot of sugar in the wintertime, I think they need some. They're still going to need be able to consume sugar, just like we need carbohydrates as well. So be sure that you keep candy boards on your hives during the wintertime. If you make your own candy boards, be sure to put them on top of the hive and allow the bees to go up there at the top of the cluster 
cluster, like our winter bee kinds that we sell, those bees can consume this sugar mixture mixed with other vitamins and minerals and protein, and that will help them tons. Another tip that you need to do in the wintertime, and this is really important for all of you that are a little bit worried about your bees and you always want to look, you know, are you the kind of person that wants to touch something if it says wet paint? Well, I'm about to tell you, stay out. Now, once I say that, are you the kind of person that wants to go in once I tell you to stay out? Look, stay out of your hive. You don't need to open it up on a cold day. It really needs to be 60 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit, sunny and no wind for you to start lifting frames of brood up. Otherwise, you're going to chill the brood. You're going to kill developing brood. Here's the worst thing of all, though. If you open up your hive in the wintertime, and guess what? You accidentally kill your queen on January the 14th. Guess what's going to happen? Are you going to be able to replace her? Absolutely not. If you're in the midst of winter, bee breeders, those of us that produce quality queens, we're not going to be able to get you a queen in the middle of the winter and your hive's going to perish before they come out of winter because even though it's winter, the queen is still laying small amount of brood in there that keep things kind of moving along. So don't get ahead of yourself. If it's not 65 degrees Fahrenheit and if it's not sunny and warm, don't go into your hive. And really, I don't think you should go into your hive at all unless you can call somebody up and have a queen ship to you in case you kill her. If you can't do that, it's not the right season to inspect your hive. Some of you confuse me with another beekeeping content creator here on YouTube. You think we look alike. Even at Hive Life, somebody came up to me and started talking to me and I realized they were talking about somebody else thinking I was him. Who? Are, just take a guess. What other YouTube content creator on beekeeping can you think of here on YouTube that I get confused with? Can, can you guess who it is? Mm, let me tell you who it is. I don't think we look alike, maybe a little bit, but it's Fred Dunn. Yeah, do you think we look alike? Well, we kind of need to put each other side by side and you can see if we look alike. Take a look at this side by side and see what you think. Hey everybody, what's up? David Burns here with my one of my favorite youtubers am i really you are wow i appreciate yeah. that good Dave. to see you fred good to see you too i get people that tell me they say i watch three people on youtube you fred and cayman and sometimes they say other and people. cayman's in the trip world he's huh? in he's in there he's yep. in there yep. yep well you're also in the feed where it says people that watch channels similar to yours and you're oh, right at the yep. top of the list yep. so we, we do are. have a lot of yeah. overlap so yeah. good yeah. what's really cool about me and you is we've been on YouTube about the same amount of time. Exactly, yeah. About 2008. 2008, wow. not about, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. I, I it's really a long didn't time. know much about you until maybe a year or two ago. I don't know okay. why. Just, well, that's YouTube, that's Google's algorithms. They well, present us to one yeah. another when the time is right. Yeah. It, yeah. It's hard when you're a YouTube content creator, though, to watch other people's. That's we're, right. We're making videos and we're publishing things all the time. It's time consuming. Yeah, it is time Absolutely. consuming. But it's yep. a pleasure. I wanted to be able to say hi to you. Thank uh, you. I think people that watch our channels have a, a great deal of respect because of our gray beards and gray hair. There's something about that. And we can be confused for one another. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, if they met us yeah. in person, though, they would see this difference. Oh yeah. I, I'm really. So, I'm kind of like standing like yeah, this. Yeah. Okay. So I like your channel. I like your background. It's really a cool background you have very that. oh the background yeah in my, on yeah. your set yeah yeah it's got the some like of, darkness and some blue lights and blue lights yeah good color theory there That's warm good. lights in the oh, foreground like for that. the subject yeah, and no. your background evolved pretty it quick did, there too evolved, i know yeah. i'm still working on it yeah yeah no uh lighting makes a big difference I know. It sets us off complementary colors tertiary colors all yeah. the stuff that you practice yeah. daily people don't realize how much yeah. we go into detail about getting our channels to look good and sound good yeah and, yeah, yeah. You're, you ha you must have a different camera than I've seen around. You, your camera is different. You, what kind of camera do you use? Uh, for the YouTube daily yeah. stuff, that's a Sony AX100. Oh, well, really? Straight okay. video camera. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. And, uh, well, it's a, it's a great set. You have a lot of guests on your program. I like that. Yeah, I've done interviews, but yeah. those are all Zooms, so oh, it's Zoom. very rare to bring somebody in. Yeah. Dr. David Peck is the only yeah. one that's actually been in there, I think. Uh, yeah. One of the guys from the stream team, Brian, snuck down in there one time. I had to 
call yeah. 911 or whatever. <laughs> get them out. I think when I started on uh, the, on YouTube, you were doing about the same time on chickens. Yeah, I did poultry. It's Fred's Fine Fowl. Yeah. I'm a poultry technician. So in fact, yeah. my my website. Uh, was originally Fred's Reds, so I did Rhode wow. Island Reds oh, exclusively. Yeah. I've raised them. Yeah. And uh, honeybees have always been on the the list of things I wanted to do. Yeah. And my wife didn't like the idea. So, but I'm also a photographer. So wow. I was doing photography for um, the Department of Agriculture to document colony collapse disorder 2006. So 2006 really is the benchmark for when I started keeping bees. Okay. Yeah. And That's uh, me too. That's when I started. Well, I'm no, I, I started in '94. But I started my bee business in 2006. Yeah. Okay, so 2006. Yeah. yeah, that was kind of the year that people became very concerned oh, yeah, did, about the like, bees. And yeah. uh, then when you start doing that, your camera's your witness. Yeah. So right. if you can observe things, video and document through imaging and cinema work, yeah. then you share that on a format like YouTube, which you and I know has improved a lot. The oh, amount wow. of time, you can post a video now of any length. Yeah. We can now go all the way up to 4K if you wanted to. Yeah. Back then it was 720 by 480. I know. And uh, often people will say, oh, I know this is a really old video, but I thought I'd comment anyway. We were Look limited. at the old videos. The yeah. content is still good. Yeah, Information right. doesn't get stale when it deals with biology because that's, that's not changing. That's true. Right? Yeah. The practices and implementation of beekeeping, yeah. that's in flux. Oh, yeah. But as you know, as a master beekeeper, the core of understanding the biology of the bee, and if we work from that outward, yeah. we're going to be much more successful. Yeah, we're yeah. both. And uh, YouTube is the place to do it. It's a place. As you know, because you can yeah. be anywhere in the world. You're in Missouri. Oh, yeah. I was Illinois. Born, uh, oh, you're in Illinois. I'm in Illinois, yeah. I don't know why I thought Missouri. Yeah. You still um, want to go on with the interview now that I'm from Illinois? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can still be. <laughs> My like, mom taught at University of Illinois. Oh, okay, I'm Champaign, not far. Urbana. I'm about yeah. 30, 40 miles east of there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Out in the country. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter's there right now. At University of Illinois, U of I. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. And my stepfather was a doctor of biochemistry there, oh, so yeah. Yeah. I had a good resource in him, mm -hmm. uh, science. I really think it's uh, encouraging when I found out you were also a master beekeeper. Right. I don't, I'm not saying that every YouTuber has to be a master beekeeper. Right. But I like that people know sometimes when they're looking for information and trying to wade through what's right, what's good, what works, what, what, what's going to yeah. be reliable for me and not just somebody's, you know, homebrewed experiment. Correct. They can go to somebody, put the time in and studied and became a master beekeeper. Right. That's, that's, that's a long yeah. academic row. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yeah. And uh, very unforgiving, as it should be. Yeah. So, and right. you're EAS. Yep. And I went to the Cornell program, and you realize quickly that not everyone in this group is going to get their Master Beekeeper certificate. Yeah. It's intensive for academics. Yeah. And it makes sure that you hit every point A oh, to yeah. Z. Yeah. And it's kind of like photography, if I can make that comparison. Uh, people just pick up a camera, go out, start taking pictures. Yeah. There's so much you don't know right. about what you're about to do. Yeah. And if you really want to know it, you take a professional program and then you'll understand every aspect it's a confidence building thing but we have a responsibility yeah to produce information that's valid yeah that will hopefully be long standing unless it's an opinion piece about some new gear or something yeah. that comes out sure but we have to keep the integrity of the information grounded in science yeah, oh, yeah. that's really as you already know i mean yeah. I'm, I'm preaching to the choir but we're also being yeah. watched here. So, oh, yeah. Well, um, what I try to do on my channel, is, as you do, I, I I really try to tailor to the new beginner. Okay. And yeah. a lot of times new beginners just can't really get their minds wrapped around the more deeper scientific stuff in beekeeping. And I, I think first people really need to kind of get into it and you've got to kind of hook them into beekeeping and sure. then they need to want to know more. They, sure. they need to know where to go more. A lot of times people, are talked down to by more uh, beekeepers that just mm -hmm. are giving a lot of scientific data and it overwhelms a new beginner and they just think right. I, I can't handle that right they need ease into the more of the science it can be very overwhelming it can in be. fact yeah. uh, that's part of being an educator yeah um, that's right to be able to filter down the information to what's necessary yeah. how much to get can someone started yeah it's not an opportunity to show how much you know yeah Right. It's an opportunity to create almost bullet points yeah. that guarantee the success of this person in understanding a living organism right. and then being able to make progress in that. So yeah. what do they need to know right now at this stage? You had a learner's permit when you were going to drive a car. Yeah. 
So it's kind of with beekeeping. We want to assign them with someone not only that is a beekeeper, yeah. but that cares enough to share what they know. Mm -hmm. A lot of beekeepers, as we know, hold it close to the vest. They don't want to share anything. <laughs> That's so true. And when a new beekeeper yeah. comes up with questions, they yeah. have those things, well, oh, I've been keeping bees. Yeah. 200 years yep. so uh, they create separation but what we want to do is embrace them because we really need especially the youth oh yeah right oh yeah was there someone when you were young that uh, took time and you remember that they set aside personal time to help young david oh yeah and uh, yeah. not with bees but in a lot with of with anything no with this, anything. Is, this works across the board oh, yeah. for whatever you're teaching absolutely and so that's where we are and i think what people should really understand master beekeepers the design is to be an educator yeah uh, we're doing a lot of public speaking. You, if you don't public speak and, you, and you're not comfortable yeah. communicating information in a clear way that's beneficial to whoever the audience is, right. you need to know your audience for these yeah. beginners. Yeah. And uh, you need to be able to address all levels, which yeah. you do. Yep. So. And we've, all, we've both evolved our YouTube channels. Like mm -hmm. you said in the beginning, you know, YouTube, YouTube really wasn't a thing. It was a place where you could put videos of your family or for your friends to watch. Mm -hmm. But boy, it's really evolved into something that, with mm -hmm. beekeeping especially, it's where new beginners are going to find out what is beekeeping all about. Mm -hmm. And Cayman has done it right by tapping into social media mm -hmm. and drawing in beekeepers that have found out about me and you, and they found mm -hmm. out about beekeeping through us, and now we can be here and they can meet us mm -hmm. and connect to people that help them get started. That mm -hmm. means a lot to them. Mm -hmm. It really does. It does. It's well, it's what they're telling us is true. That, yeah, <laughs> that right. It does mean a lot. So yeah. there are so many people that come up during this, and I'm sure it's happening to you. They started beekeeping yeah. because they happened across oh, a yeah. random video on YouTube yep. that was just promoted by Google. Right. And uh, then they thought, wow, that's almost doable, yeah. especially the backyard. Yeah. The amateur level beekeeping, Absolutely. which by the way is my target zone too. Okay. I good. want the backyard beekeepers and that can seem like an escape route to some yeah. degree. Because if we're really if we start advising commercial scale beekeeping, the liability of the information you share becomes yeah. magnified. Right, it is. So if we're yeah. just talking about backyard beekeeping, the potential failures are yeah. manageable. Right. 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 Yeah. We didn't talk someone into investing in a three hundred thousand dollar project yeah. somewhere. Right. Or you know, Bob sure. Benny, they talk about small budget projects at seventy five, eighty thousand dollars. <laughs> right. For me, yeah. You know, so I know. right, I hear you. Um, it's I like the intimacy of backyard beekeeping because there are people for whom this is a very healing practice. Yeah. It is a way to add a dimension to their life yeah. that they may not have had before. There are very introverted kids, for example, um, that because they discover beekeeping, that's where you see that light bulb go on oh, when yeah. a family just happened by and they're walking oh, through yeah. the bee yard and you show kids or you hand a child a drone yeah. and they get to hold it in their hand, you have no idea the lasting impact of that single tactile experience. It's and so it's cool. empowering to be the person that was the source of that. It is, it's cool. Right? I know. Yeah. So do you live in a place where you try, do YouTuber, uh, people that watch you on YouTube try to come to your place or you keep all that private? They do not. In fact, the reason uh, that I did YouTube is so that I could provide the education and also give seminars or specific training. Because yeah. I do stuff unique to a classroom, for example. If a biology yeah. teacher reaches out I'll create a YouTube that's okay. just for yeah. them. It's a private YouTube. Okay. So yeah. then I can do that remotely, which I much prefer because yeah. heaven forbid we set up a date. This is long-term planning, especially when it's schools, right? Yeah. So if they come out and we just have three days of rain. Oh, exactly. Now what are you going to do? I always think so, of it like I can reach so many more people on YouTube. Uh, absolutely. Than and I can locally. it's perennial. Oh, yeah. Those yeah. videos are there forever, and you can make yep. a reference to that. Absolutely. And when somebody asks a question, yeah, I did a video on that two years ago, yeah. and it covers, I think, what you're doing really well. If yeah. you see it and still have questions, let me know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, I'm glad you're out there. Absolutely. I'm glad you're out there. I'm with glad us you are too. We're together. Need, yeah. Yeah. And you know, we're not in competition. You know. No. That's and see, that's another thing. I think people that have been in YouTube for a long time, their, their skin is thicker. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because I'm not. I have. That's why I give shout outs to other YouTubers. Yeah. Um, if somebody's covering something, somebody's asking about yeah, a right. topic that's related to beekeeping, yeah. and somebody else has already covered it, done it well. That's my shout out for the day. Yeah. And if somebody's, you know, they could have been doing YouTube for a couple of weeks. Now here's the thing. I think the younger set becomes extremely competitive yeah. and uh, don't understand it's a fellowship. Yeah, right. And that if you can, and I'm not saying you have to collaborate with everybody because as you already mentioned, YouTube's hard work. Yeah. Doing what you already have on your plate, getting the editing done, getting right. your content out, 
at a regular cadence, which is what Google a lot, cares about. A lot of work, oh yeah. So now if we add collaboration, um, yeah. that complicates it, and it it's, I don't think it's necessary yeah. all the time. It does. Yeah. And so sometimes you can reach out to Mazer Beekeeper communities mm -hmm. are great. Like we have our own Cornell group. So yeah. if we've got a question, it yeah. does seems a little vague. Uh, let's find out what the science says now. So I'm sure you must yeah. have some kind oh, of yeah, we do. group that you can Absolutely. tap into. And hey, guys, here's what's going on. Yeah, I'm constantly talking with the EAS master beekeepers. We're yeah. talking about news reports, research. Sure. Come yeah. Talking about is it worthy. And yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It keeps so. you fresh. That's it. Well, Fred, I thank you for hey. stopping by my booth. Thanks for having Pleasure me. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah, wow. absolutely. It's always great Very to see good. people. I'm glad you're here. Maybe you'll come back next year and be one of the presenters. Who knows? Maybe so. Yeah. All right. So thank you so much. Thank I you. appreciate thank it. Thank you for being yep. here. Well, if you noticed a change in my studio in the background behind me, I just needed a place to put my uh, silver play button award. And Sherry and I have been working hard to redesign this room. This room used to be our beekeeping store. And then COVID uh, 2019, 2020 kind of shut that down of course and at that point we were so involved in uh, our online store that we just couldn't see keeping our store open because we live out in the middle of nowhere not a lot of traffic out here and so we're redesigning this whole room the former studio that you're used to is still over here and it's all set up and then we're setting up the scene here behind us. This is where I'm gonna do more coffee times and I'm gonna be creating more student videos with my special marker board that you've seen me use where I can teach you guys bee biology and get into the science of beekeeping. And believe it or not, the north wall over here is yet another studio. So the camera in the middle can rotate around and just film at these different scenes. You know, we all like variety. We all like a different scene and winters are long, can't go out in the hive. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of variety here in the studio so let me know in the comments below uh, what you think of the new scene also listen to this I really want you guys to ask me beekeeping questions I can't always answer all your questions in the comments I wish I could but here's what I want to propose to you make a very short video because I want you to email it to my staff here Make a short video of yourself either standing by your hive or standing out in your yard or drinking a cup of coffee. And then you can email a question to me in a form of a video. Now, if you do this, I want to feature your video question on my YouTube channel here and I will pick several each video to answer. Wouldn't that be cool? See if you can do that. Yeah, use your cell phone. Don't send me a real crappy video that I can't really make out any, that's so pixelated I can't tell who it is. And don't make it so long that you won't be able to email it to me. But play around with it, make a short video. Hey David, like your channel, I got a question for you, blah, blah, blah. Thank you, this is Sally from New Hampshire. That'd be so cool. So do that today. Send some questions. And here's where I want you to email them to. Email them to longlanehoneybees at gmail.com. And I'll feature you in an upcoming video. Speaking of upcoming videos, I've got a great video with more winter tips. And these are five wrong winter tips. It's important that you know them. Check out this video right up here. Five wrong tips for winter. I'll see you over there.